Greetings, my name is Tim and today I'm going to present you Exynize, a platform for building data processing and visualization pipelines right in your browser. If you ever dealt with data processing and visualization, you know that it might be painful to create such a system. And uh, the main reason is not, of course, writing the actual processing algorithms or visualizations, but setting up the infrastructure around it. You know, you have to scaffold your backend application, you, can, you have to create the source components that would import your data, then you have to transform it, then you have to actually write the processing logic, then you have to send it to frontend somehow, and in frontend you have to visualize it, which is, you know, you use D3 or whatever, and you again have to convert it to a different format. Um, if you would just to, you know, do the actual writing of the code, it would take way less time to do that. So with that in mind, um, I've built an Xnice platform. This is um, what I'm going to show you today. Um, bear in mind, this is just a month of work or so, maybe even less. And I would say that this is an alpha, so it's um, not in any way finished. But it does work, and I have uh, two use cases to show you. So in process of showing them, I will explain how exactly the platform works and hopefully you'll find it interesting. Um, all right, so what's the idea? The idea is that basically with Exynize, all you have to do is you, you have to create the components that will process or deliver the data, and then you can assemble them into pipelines so the components can be reusable. Um, we have two use cases. One is the Twitter feed, so we will compare product sentiments on Twitter. And the other one is BBC World News uh, World Map with uh, heat points, essentially. So let's start with the Twitter. So we want to create a component uh, that will get the uh, tweets with the specific keywords uh, as a stream and deliver them to our front end. So uh, this is our create component UI. Um, so let's name it. We want a Twitter source, right? And we'll say it will the uh, simple a Twitter source that deliver uh, continuously delivers um, tweets that contain given keyword key or keywords rather right because you can have several of them um, to the pipeline. Pipeline. Okay, now that um, I have the source code prepared, so I, I, I will just copy paste it here and then explain you what exactly it does. But essentially, this is uh, JavaScript. So the whole system is running on uh, Node.js right now, and uh, I'm going to copy it from here, and then we're going to walk through it. So as you can see here, um, it got detected that the component type is source, so this is done automatically using the um, um, it's pretty much a parser that tells me basically what tokens are in there and I'm looking that okay so it actually takes a few parameters and then there's observable um, and if, if the source code contains this uh, observable on next um, token that means that this is actually a source. So what are observables? Well, this is, if you are not familiar, this is the essence of uh, functional reactive programming. And uh, in this instance, I'm using a RigsJS. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you can read more about it in the article that is linked in the description of the video. Or, you know, if you are in the article right now, you can just scroll a bit and see it. I will link all the uh, interesting bits about it. But let's have a look. So um, all the components should export a function. Uh, that does something. So you can see source uh, exports a function that has the last argument which is observable and this is as it always should be. So observable, basically the um, uh, observable will, will be constructed by using this function and uh, it will turn into a source. All other parameters are up to users. So here, since we're creating a Twitter um, source, I am gonna pass on the all the Twitter access tokens and consumer keys and secrets uh, to set it up and then I as well gonna pass in the filter language because I want only English tweets and I want to pass in the keywords uh, or I, I called it keyword here but it's actually keywords because it can be just a string of comma separated keywords for Twitter. And as you can notice here we're gonna use the tweet uh, npm package so I can actually arbitrarily import any packages from npm here. Uh, at the moment, they are whitelisted, so I don't allow any packages on the backend, only the ones that I permit. And, um, you know, this due to security reasons, because allowing people to run arbitrary code in the backend is scary enough as is, and uh, allowing to import any NPM package can be even scarier. 
uh, but maybe I'll find a way to do it better. At the moment, it's just a white list of the packages that allow, but uh, we're going to use this tweet package. Uh, as you can see, we take on the um, consumer stuff and access token and everything and set it up. Uh, also, as you might have noticed, we are using ES6 or ES2015. This is because all of that is run through Babel, so it's going to be... Um, I think it's Babel stage one, so basically whatever is more or less stable in the specs and is in, is in Babel, you can use here, including constants, including error functions, destruction, or you know whatever you want. So you can see, so we created the Twitter instance, and then we get a uh, stream from status filter, and we track the keyword. Uh, That's why we need the keyword. All right, so then we attach the stream on tweet and whenever we get this tweet, we are gonna transform it a bit because we don't need all the information that the tweet actually delivers, but we want the ID, we want the created ad text, we want the actual text, username, language, and uh, URI, which is constructed from a screen name and ID string. And then we're gonna filter it by, you know, whatever the user language is inputted, and then we're gonna dispatch it into observable. Uh, just a quick note, if you are not familiar with observables, this is, uh, think of it as a promise that can uh, return several values over any period of time and cannot be, you know, an unlimited amount of values. Yeah, you can close it, obviously, but again, if you're interested, read a bit more uh, about it uh, below in the article. All right, and of course, we're going to handle errors, so whatever there's error, we're going to despise the error into observable. Um, we can test it. So I'm gonna right now go here and take the credentials uh, from my test Twitter account uh, or test Twitter app rather and I'm gonna copy paste them right here so that you know we can actually see that this thing works. I'm gonna paste all of that here so we're gonna take the English and we're gonna compare how the uh, Nexus 6, iPhone 6s and Galaxy S6 are doing. So I, I hit test this will open a WebSocket to the server and will start delivering me whatever comes in uh, from this uh, source. So as you can see, the tweets start coming in and I can terminate it at any moment. This will close the socket, shut down the um, source and basically show me the JSON so I can have a look and you know, okay, that looks exactly as I want it. So let's hit create. Component was created and now we can, if we hit the browse here, you can see this is our tweet component. It is a source type and this is the description and this is the source code we have. Again, you know, this is alpha version, so not exactly uh, the best looking one, uh, but uh, you can see it here. All right, so let's continue. Um, after we got the tweets, we want to uh, do a sentiment analysis on them. So let's say the, um, um, sentiment analysis uh, processor. So processor that takes uh, incoming data and analyzes uh, sentiments for um, text field in it, right? So <clears throat> the next uh, component type is a processor and I'm gonna take this sentiment analyzer here. So again, we're gonna use the node sentiments package, which is, I mean, you know, it's just word list based uh, sentiment analysis. So it's not very precise, I guess, but it works. So the processors uh, work in a very simple way. You will get a data, which will be the single uh, tweet in our case, which you can manipulate. And then you have to return observable again. So since here the code is uh, synchronous, we can just do whatever we want and then return observable uh, return, which will be just wrap the data we want. Uh, and that's about it. Again, uh, the cool part is here is that if, if the code is asynchronous, which I will show you a bit later, you can still return an observable first and then do all your work, you know, as you would do with a promise, for example. So that's pretty flexible and uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> Under the hood, this will be wrapped in a flat map function, which will transform the data uh, into whatever one. So uh, again, here we calculate in the sentiments from the text field. So I'm going to test it. I'm going to pass um, text. Uh, I am a good boy. And that basically I expect it to be uh, positive, right? So we have a score of three, which means that it's positive and I'm a bad boy should be negative, right? So it seems to be working fine. Let's hit create. And as you can see now, it has been added here to the catalog. 
and now we need the last component which is a renderer so this is um render compare uh, render uh, so let's call it twitter phones comparison uh, renderer right uh, so renders comparison between three uh, phone models from Twitter. Uh, okay, and then I'm gonna, nope, that was an error. So yeah, if you actually break something or mistype, you will see an error right away here. It will tell you what's wrong. So this is uh, again, it's Prima and uh, Babel, they deliver errors immediately, maybe not as well formatted now, but you know, you can see what's going on. All right, so let's fix it. Uh, okay, so let's uh, have a look here. Um, I guess maybe we'll look here because there's a bit more space here. The editor there is not uh, as good. So let's start with the, uh, I just collapsed it, didn't I? Yes, let's expand it. No, I said expanded, there we go. So let's start with the very bottom uh, default function. So this is basically when you create a renderer, you have to export a function that returns a new React component. So as you can see here, I return uh, React create class right away. And what will happen is that the front end will create a WebSocket, which will connect to the back end and continuously stream the data into front end. And then the wrapper will pass the new data as this props data to the compo whatever component you create. So as you can see here, I take this props data and split it into three categories. So we're gonna have a, whatever tweets contain Nexus Ward, whatever tweets contain iPhone and whatever tweets contain Galaxy. We're gonna split them in three and then we're gonna render three columns uh, with Nexus 6P, iPhone 6S and Galaxy S6. Uh, and we're going to render two things. We're going to render the overall sentiments and then we're going to render first 10 tweets um, that we have. So overall sentiment is rendered in a very simple way. We just uh, make large text. This says positive and we reduce the collection to uh, sum up whatever the positive sentiment score is there. And then we render negative in the same way, but again for negative uh, score. And we just calculate total by reducing it for all the scores. And then the tweets are rendered again in a very simple way. So we just have the uh, list group item and uh, it just, you know, has the score label and then the username and the actual text. So very simple renderer. So again, uh, you can test it if your component is render, uh, renderable on server side, you can put in here the JSON that you want to test and you hit, can hit a test. And I actually, if I hit it, yeah, it will tell me that there are errors on it. Um, obviously because the JSON is not there, but it assumes that it is there. So you, I guess it's, it's a good idea to actually uh, account for that, that something might break. But for now, we're just gonna create it because I don't have any uh, JSON prepared. So we're just gonna hit create. And as you can see, uh, here we have our Twitter phones comparison renderer. All right, and uh, there's a default renderer always present with JSON tree view renderer which just renders the data as JSON tree uh, component, uh, which is just nice for debugging. All right, so we have now all the components, we can create a pipeline. So we're gonna say that this is a Twitter uh, phones showdown. We're gonna select the source as a Twitter. And now I need again my credentials. So I'm gonna copy the consumer key, consumer secret and all that stuff right here, as I did for testing. Um, like at the moment you have to actually assign it per component uh, but on the other hand you know that gives you the flexibility of uh, basically reusing this component for any use cases you might imagine so at the moment we're filtering english and for three phone models but maybe you want to filter for your own product or model of cars or whatever you know so then we're gonna add the processor components in our case that will be just sentiment analysis and actually this finishes the pipeline. So if I hit test right now, this will run the Twitter source and then run it through sentiment analysis. So whenever the first tweet comes in, we should see right here, uh, I'm gonna stop it right away. We should see here that, you know, we have this uh, tweet that mentions some hard case and it actually has negative sentiment, I guess, because of the word hard. <laughs> so as I said, you know, it's a word based sentiment analyzer, so it's not very precise, but you can see that it works. All right, and then we're gonna add the uh, our phone comparison uh, renderer and I'm gonna hit save. 
Uh, there are no notifications right now for saving, unfortunately, so because it's, again, as I said, alpha and some piece, bits and pieces are not finished, but if we go to browse pipelines, you will see it here. So as you can see here, I have my pipeline and um, it describes whatever components it has or processor components. I actually should maybe include the source and renderer as well here. And then you can uh, show a log from database if it was running and then you can see the status. So all the pipelines can be either running constantly or can finish uh, if the source says, okay, I'm done. For example, in the next example with the RSS feed, it will be limited uh, pipeline. The Twitter pipeline is not limited because our, oops, sorry, that's the wrong button, uh, because our Twitter source actually never, uh, is never done, is never complete. Yeah? So we only have this observable on next and it will keep on going as long as the tweets keep coming in. All right, so we can hit a start here. Again, since this is not quite finished, I have to refresh a page to actually see it running. And uh, we can see the log here, so you can see it's not dynamic log, it will only uh, refetch the data once you click show log. But if we open this in a new tab, you will actually see this is running. And uh, if we wait a bit, we will see tweets popping in. And this is uh, real-time data processing that we've just did in the browser within 10 minutes maybe? I don't know, how long did it take us? 10, 20 minutes? I mean, if I wouldn't be explaining all the source code, it would be even faster. And you've seen the amount of code we had, it was like maybe 100 lines. And you have, you know, you have this, so I can, um, I can analyze tweet intensity on products, so we can see that, you know, the, there's way more tweets about the iPhone, for example, than um, Nexus 6P or Galaxy 6S, and Galaxy S6 is quite much more popular on Twitter than Nexus 6P. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, the cool part is that basically whenever I refresh, I will get the uh, initial data right away and then all the new tweets will start coming in. Another interesting thing is that if we copy this uh, URI and then go into the uh, console and we say get j, so this is the HTTP. So if we try to get it as, um, did I, I messed up the order, right? So we need minus minus JSON, then we need get. And if we try to get it as JSON, we will actually get JSON. So you will get this, uh, the exact data that the front end is receiving. So you can use it in your API, for example. Okay, let's go back to our browser and stop the pipeline now. Um, there are some minor bugs. Okay, so now it's done. But the cool thing is that actually if I refresh, I will still get all the old results that, uh, you know, was here. So uh, this is the Twitter phone showcase. I think it is pretty awesome that you can build uh, such a anal analyzer uh, or visualization pipeline really quick. And, I, you know, I don't have to care about setting up front end, setting up back end, configuring all the stuff that I did before because it, it takes quite some time to do all these boilerplate tasks. All right, so let's try something a bit more complicated, you know, because this was very easy. This is just like pipeline with uh, one processor and, and that's it. So it's boring. I mean, um, let's try the BBC use case. So this is a bit more interesting. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to take the BBC RSS news and this is going to be RSS source. So uh, returns articles from RSS feed. So as you can see, I'm using the feed parser and request JS. Um, so basically we're getting the, uh, we're getting the whatever URL is provided and then um, taking the response, piping it into feed parser. This is essentially the feed parser tutorial code. And then whenever the items comes in, uh, this is actually not something we need. Uh, whenever the items comes in, we just put them into observable. And then once we're done, we say observable is completed. So this is the um, thing that I was talking about, that basically this is a finite source. So basically once all the articles are ended, it will complete. Again, we can say, okay, once it's done, just wait for five minutes and then try to reload it again and send us new items. So which is kind of cool. And then I need the BBC, uh, sorry, this is there, there we go, there I have it. So we're gonna paste the BBC uh, world news feed and I'm gonna test it. And as you can see, here we go, we have all our articles, there's quite a lot of them. So we're gonna create this component. And uh, what we wanna do then is we wanna fetch the full text because by default, um, articles don't have full text. So you only have the, um, 
description, which uh, for, B for BBC case, for example, it's very, very limited. So we want a full text uh, processor. Um, fetches full text for data link field. So this is what it does. Uh, as you can see here, we're using again super agent for requesting the page and then Cheerio for cleaning it. So I'm going to do a bit additional things here and then I have additional helper functions that clean text and HTML. Uh, as you can see here, I'm returning the observable create. So as I already said, since this is asynchronous, we will have to return observable right away and then do our work. Then we get the link from data. And then we get this link and once we got it, again, if it's an error, we throw it into observable. If not, we load it into Cheerio, which is something like a jQuery uh, analog for the backend, essentially for Node.js. Uh, we remove the script and object tags because we don't need them. And then we try to get the actually the story. So I know that the um, BBC News used this story body inner for uh, wrapping the story. So we're going to try that again. You know, this is not exactly generic component because I hard code this, but uh, you can change it again. If it fails, we just get the body. Then we remove all the figures and images and whatever we can find there. And we clean HTML and text and put them into data and can uh, return the data back. So, okay, we need, don't need this here. Um, basically, yeah, uh, again, we can test it uh, if we would have the link. I don't have any links from BBC right now, but if you put the link here, it will actually get you uh, pros, uh, proper data. Again, you have to you know pass JSON here with like link equals whatever, uh, but we're not going to do that right now. So we're going to hit create. And uh, after we got the full text, uh, what we want to do is we want to annotate it. So we want to actually get all the locations that are mentioned in the text. So we're going to call it Fox annotation processor. So uh, this uh, takes the text field uh, from data and processes it using Fox NLP API. So we're going to use the Fox NLP tool that was created by my colleagues in AKSW research group. Uh, it's a very cool tool that basically takes whatever text you pass to it and then uh, finds an entity mentioned into it. So it's a natural, um, natural language processing nature, uh, entities extraction tool. Yeah? So as you can see here, we're again going to use the request and then load dash for some filtering. Uh, so we're going to take uh, the data text and then construct JSON that is required for Fox uh, request. And say okay this application json and stringify the uh, json so that's required for fox so it's how it works again if it's an error we're going to throw it into the um, observable and um, construct our own error if there's something wrong with the status code uh, and then we're going to parse the body and uh, convert the annotations into a more so it, it actually returns json ld I decided not to add the JSONLD parser here for now and just process it myself, which is maybe not the best way to do that. So, but you know, it works. So we just convert it into a more uh, nicer format. We just have types, we have name, and we have begin and end indexes. And then we just add it to data and push the data further and complete the uh, observable. So this one. Um, again, we can test it, I guess, but I don't know. Like the the problem with the NLP APIs is that they usually require quite lengthy text to recognize entities. So we're just gonna go ahead and create this. All right. So after we got the entities, what we want to do is we want to use nominatim uh, to resolve the location entities into actually. Um, so we we'll call it nominatim processor. Uh, so nominatim resolves location entities into actual places that has location uh, coordinates. So let it do in longitude. So takes um, annotations and resolves results. Yeah, that's a location type an annotations into places with latitude and longitude. All right. So what does it do? Well, it takes the input data and uh, in this case, I cheated a bit. So I basically turned it into observable right away. And then I flat map it. So flat map does a uh, synchronous transformation into another observable. Once again, if there's no annotations, we just return the same data again. It uh, doesn't matter. If uh, there are no places already existing in the data, we create this array, which where we'll put actually all the annotations. 
And then we merge the uh, annotations map to observable, which will get the um, uh, nominatium. So here you can actually see that I took the nominatium search, which is just node callback, and converted it into observable search, which basically is observable now, so that we can flat map it uh, and uh, merge them together, and you know that we don't have to manually mess with all this asynchronicity and parsing results for each of them because it's a pain in the ass. Okay, so we take the annotations and we check that, okay, if annotations has a type location, then we want to um, actually try to find places. So if it doesn't have um, um, locations, then we just return undefined and then we filter them out later. So because we don't care about those. So as you can see here, we try to search for annotation name and if the results are fine, we will return a name with uh, which was the request name and then latitude and longitude for the, whatever the first place is there. Or we're gonna return undefined if there was any error or any problems with getting results. Okay, so uh, then we're gonna filter undefined as I already said and then we're gonna reduce all this uh, merged feed so there will be basically a feed of uh, or observable of places. We're gonna reduce it into array which will have all the places in array. We're gonna take this places array and put it into data as places predicate. And that means that actually this was completely useless so I don't know why I did that. <laughs> all right, so um, Again, you can put in here JSON and have a look at how it works. I don't have any prepared, so we're gonna just hit create here. And then the last bit of this pipeline is the map renderer. Uh, so I'm gonna paste this code here and we're gonna call it map renderer. And then renders um, map with places in item in given item, let's say that, right? So we're gonna go again, switch here and have a look at this source code because there's a bit um, trickier. So as you can see here, we're using a leaflet.js and if you notice here, I'm gonna import the CSS right away using JavaScript. This is because all the rendering components are pre-compiled with uh, Webpack. So I can actually just do that and the Webpack will handle CSS injection and all that stuff for me. So we're going to define some styles for uh, gray nodes, green nodes, and red nodes. And there's a basic map config with like OpenStreetMap, uh, tile layer, and attribution control, and all that stuff. And here's actually the component. So basically, once it's mounts, we will create the uh, um, leaflet map from the map diff that we have here uh, with the map config. And we're going to set the view to, uh, this actually should be minus minus 10, if I believe. Uh, and here it should be minus minus 10 as well because this is the center of the map with zoom minus 2 which will um, basically mean that we are zoomed out almost completely. So and once we will receive the new props with uh, new data we will just render all the items. As you can see here we only render the items that actually have places and uh, then for each place, we just check, okay, the latitude, the longitude is not some broken value. And I think minus one, I don't think actually the new nominatium passes it. So that was the old nominatium problem. So you can actually kill that. Uh, and here as well. So kill that, or may, oh, let's just leave it. I mean, I don't remember if they actually fixed it. All right, so and we're going to calculate the color. So if sentiment score is zero, we're going to say it's gray. And if sentiment score is positive, we're going to say it's green, otherwise it's red. So it's really easy. Then we're going to draw the circle with the location. We're going to make it really big because we're zoomed out and want to see it anyway. We're going to don't have any stroke. Fill color is basically the color that we determined. Opacity is 0.8 and then uh, I have this class marker animated, but um, it's actually a lie because I don't really have any classes, but you can add, you know, fade in or whatever animations you want. Again, with simple CSS code. And that's about it. So if we create this now, we can go into create a pipeline and then say, so BBC world news heat map and we're gonna select the source as RSS. Uh, we're gonna say BBCI, so we're gonna put in the feed here. Um, we're gonna say that first we wanna get the full text. Uh, after that, we want to get sentiments because this is quicker. Then we wanna get Fox annotations and then we're gonna get 
nominatum uh, processing. So basically, so that we, we have the locations. And then we want to render it as a map. I'm going to save that now. So once again, no notifications here, uh, but the pipeline was created. As you can see, it's off. So I'm going to start it now and hope that it works because sometimes it did fail on me, but I think it should be fine. So since this pipeline is a bit trickier, it's going to take longer to start than the Twitter one. Uh, but now we open this in a new tab and there we go. We have a map. The question is, is the socket hot already? So I'm going to refresh it couple of times and hopefully we will get the ah there we go so we will start getting the uh, circles now that are colored in accordance to the article mentioning the things happening here so for example here we can see that there's something going on in france here and there's a fifa officials arrested in zurich so i guess the article mentioned france somehow and there's a lot of red dots. Again, this is FIFA stuff. What is this? Yeah, so if you, as you might imagine, the Syria and Middle East in general will be like all covered in huge red dots. And this probably Syria related in Russia as well. On the other hand, there's something really good happening in China. Uh, yeah, so they are building giant new mall. And, uh, you know, the, basically this is how it goes. And um, the thing is that all of that works in real time and you don't even have to think about making it real time. So this is kind of the power of the uh, Exynize platform, you know, we just build it as if you would work with uh, single entities, but then it turns it everything into a uh, real time or near real time since it takes some time to process uh, data visualization and processing. And uh, all you have to do is just work with one uh, entity again. Uh, okay. So <laughs> this FIFA officials article mentioned a lot of places was US US is probably no again. Okay. Whoa. Okay some crazy number of yeah so there's this san bernardino shootings some crazy stuff going on in the us as always on the other hand what do we have we have something good news flood bring okay i don't know why this is positive but again you know the sentiment processing like word based is not exactly precise floods are definitely not positive thing unlikely secondary paid missionary i mean this is definitely positive so you know it seems to be working fine okay so um yeah those are the two demos that i wanted to show you and i'm actually gonna go and show you our live version uh, so you can find it on alpha.exenize.com if you are interested you can uh, request access here um, at the moment since this is like a very early alpha i I'm not planning to open it to everyone, but if you think that this platform might benefit you, just request an access, um, tell me why actually you want it and uh, I will contact you, we can talk a bit and you know, if, if you have a nice interesting use case, I will grant you access or you can just you know sign up and get an email once we're actually in beta and open for everyone. Okay, uh, so this was Exynize platform. Thank you for watching and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you want. You might want to read the article on Medium that is linked in the description as well because it might have some additional details that I missed in this screencast. Oh yeah, uh, my name is Tim, that was Exynize Platform. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.